the rise in water pollution and the resulting adverse impact it has on water quality is a burning issue increasingly capturing the attention of concerned citizens corporations and governments alike water can be contaminated by several pollutants as you can infer from the visual one way to categorize water pollution is based on its source if the source of water pollution is easily identifiable let's say a factory disposes of its effluents into the water body using a pipe then it is called a point source of pollution however if let's say the source of water pollution is diffused for example after rainfall pesticides and fertilizers flow into the water body from nearby agricultural fields then this type of pollution is called a non point source of pollution water pollution can also be categorized based on the type of the pollutant plant matter animal waste human waste are called organic pollutants because these are essentially carbon based or naturally occurring compounds however plastic bottles or any similar type of material is something known as inorganic or synthetic pollutants because these are man made or petroleum based compounds treating water to eliminate or reduce the pollution effectively is therefore a challenging task because essentially water is an abundant resource extensively utilized by one and all just to clarify the theme of this video is not about producing clean drinking water as such it is more about making the water quality suitable for marine health for industrial consumption and for certain types of domestic consumption activities failure to treat organic pollution in time has terrible consequences consider the common and increasingly occurring menace of algal blooms a water body becomes infested with green or green blue algae which feast and grow due to the increasing presence of organic pollutants nitrates and phosphate compounds in particular these blooms then prevent sunlight from entering the water body they deplete the oxygen levels as well thereby posing a threat to marine plant and animal life as well as secrete toxins into the water which results in fish kills and water being rendered unsafe for industrial and domestic consumption and even harmful to human health as well besides open water bodies pollution and water quality issues are also abundantly faced at municipal sewage treatment plants and as a matter of fact at most wastewater and effluent treatment plants the growth in human population and the rise in industrial activity is directly proportional to the increase in pollution generated and the sewage treatment plants are often unable to process the household and industrial waste effectively in turn they release this untreated sewage in open water bodies which is a major point source of pollution water quality is typically assessed under these groupings physical characteristics of water are typically measured such as temperature ph dissolved and suspended solids turbidity or clarity of water and so on oxygen is the life force of a marine environment and perhaps its best indicator of water quality the presence of dissolved oxygen or do indicates whether there is sufficient oxygen in the water body which would allow the marine plants and animals to survive biochemical oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand indicates the oxygen consumption levels of microorganisms and aerobic bacteria these organisms use oxygen in their quest to break down the organic matter which is the food for them in the water therefore if the bod and cod levels in the water body is more it implies the presence of large quantity of organic pollution it also implies that there will be less and less dissolved oxygen in the water body for the fishes and marine plants organics such as fats oil and grease is also typically measured the presence of heavy metals is looked with serious concern because these cause the deadly diseases in humans such as cancer the presence of lead nickel zinc mercury and so on ions and minerals are your standard water parameter chlorides fluorides hardness of water and other minerals and so on microbiologics is something which is present in human and animal waste in particular so fecal coliforms and total coliforms are water quality parameters which 
sewage treatment plants uh, struggle to basically control and treat it effectively. The norms for these water quality parameters are set up by the state pollution control boards or the central pollution control board here in India. In this visual, you can see seven parameters by which the performance of a sewage treatment plant is assessed. These comprise of BOD, COD, total nitrogen and phosphorus, ammonical nitrogen, total suspended solids and fecal coliforms. As you can infer from the visual, the norms have become more stringent over a period of time. Not only that, the emphasis on routine water quality checks is also felt and imposition of strict fines on sewage treatment plants on municipal corporations is a routine occurrence in India these days. The impact that water pollution has on our society in general and on the planet as a whole is immense. Water pollution adversely impacts the health of the marine environment as well as human health. Industrial and agricultural productivity suffers too. And lest we forget, there is a significant cost also involved in treating this water pollution. You can choose to pause the video here to examine the various categories and the pointers within. Now that we have laid an elaborate context on what water pollution is all about, it is time to move on to the next section which is water treatment. Organizations, corporations and governments prefer that water treatment should have three important characteristics. A. It should be effective at treating the pollution. B. It should be scalable as in it should be able to treat large quantities of water. And C. It should be cost effective. My firm Interlock Mapping Services sells a novel nanotechnology based natural water treatment solution which helps check all these three boxes. To help rejuvenate open water bodies such as ponds, lakes, drains and rivers as well as enhances the performance of conventional water and sewage treatment plants. Let me explain how. While water treatment techniques are a relatively new phenomenon, water pollution has always existed in some form, even if in far lesser quantities and mostly being organic in nature. Then you may wonder, how was the pollution treated historically? Did the water body cleanse itself? The answer is yes. It is the aquatic food chain which has certain inbuilt mechanisms which allows the water body to remain smell free, mosquito free and maintain pollutants at low levels. From the visual, you can infer that there are four rungs of the aquatic food chain. The lowest rung comprises of micro and macro organisms. The second rung comprises of certain more complex organisms such as zooplankton and queen conch. Above them are the small fishes and even above them are the large fishes. So the lowest rung, the organisms basically consume oxygen. Remember the previous slide where I had explained how oxygen is one of the most important parameters in the water body. So these microorganisms consume oxygen and they use up the nitrates, phosphates and minerals in the organic waste as it is food to them. Subsequently, Creatures such as zooplankton consume these micro and macro organisms and as we go higher up in the food chain, you have other predators as well. Now this nanotechnology based solution has been devised utilizing a deep understanding of the aquatic food web. The solution itself is comprised of nanonutrients embedded in silica particles. When these are inserted into the water body, these particles are absorbed as food only by a particular type of plankton known as diatoms or diatom algae. These microorganisms are prolifically present in the water. Diatoms algae cell walls are silica based which is why they constantly seek silica from the environment and these nanonutrients are a source of food for them. This acceleration of growth of diatom algae forms the cornerstone of our solution. Diatom algae have three important remediating characteristics. Firstly, they absorb dissolved carbon dioxide and release 100% pure oxygen nanobubbles which remain dissolved in the water body for a long duration of time. This activity happens during the day in the presence of photosynthesis. Secondly, it also consumes pollutants like nitrates and phosphates which act as food for them. Thirdly, the rate of growth of diatom algae far exceeds that of the harmful green and blue-green algae 
this is the same algae which was responsible for the harmful toxic algal blooms so what happens is because the food is consumed by diatom algae it suppresses the growth of the harmful algae as well the oxygen nanobubbles that are present in the water gets consumed by aerobic bacteria which is the second character in our story aerobic bacteria has a remediating characteristic in that for its food it breaks down harmful and complex organic compounds which are present in the sludge and water into harmless and simpler organic compounds this brings us to the third and final important character of our story which is zooplankton zooplankton consumes diatoms as food now during the day diatoms as you know released oxygen and consumed carbon dioxide during the night because of lack of photosynthesis the process reverses this would have resulted in the reduction in the quantity of dissolved oxygen which had increased earlier during the day but because zooplankton consumes this diatoms the level of dissolved oxygen in the water remains constant which is a big plus for us the second remediating characteristic of zooplankton is that it also consumes the simpler organic compounds which was generated by the aerobic bacteria so the pollution quantity also reduces and if these two remediating characteristics weren't sufficient you would also be delighted to know that zooplankton consumes mosquito larvae bacteria including the pathogenic ones and other forms of waste the net result of this three character driven story is that the treated water becomes well free mosquito free largely free of pollutants and also much clearer wasn't this interesting this is how the nanotechnology based solution leverages the understanding of the aquatic food web to encourage a thriving marine ecosystem which naturally cleanses the organic water pollution just in a matter of couple of months the method of application of this solution is simple too all you need are three pieces of equipment a preparatory drum where you will have to initially mix the solution with jaggery to culture the diatoms and aerobic bacteria which will accelerate the treatment process this step is optional secondly you will require a spraying hose which will allow you to dispense the cultured or non cultured solution into the water body easily thirdly water sensors will help you monitor the water quality metrics from time to time during the initial project bringing the water body to a steady state would need 45 to 60 days of continuous treatment post which the quantity of solution to be applied will be very small just enough for maintenance purposes that is as new polluted water enters into the system we will also give you a dosing plan for the initial run and even advise you at which locations to insert our proprietary liquid to have the best results let's examine certain visuals and videos from real life projects this is a video from a polluted lake in an urban city of india pre treatment as you can see the water is like a drain water and there is ample amount of waste in the water body and around it as well the stench emanating from it is also immense the first step of the treatment would be to remove any floating objects would which are uh, on the surface of the water such as plastic waste or plants if any we can now dose the water body with our treatment liquid using a spraying hose in a matter of a few days visible cues of the water treatment in action will be observed as you will see from the following videos what you are seeing over here is sludge which is a semi solid slurry of organic waste matter sludge is dislodged from the bottom of the water body where it resides and the floating sludge is quickly disintegrated by the high levels of aerobic bacteria activity Isn't this remarkable? The ripples that you are seeing on the surface of the water body is not rain water falling on the lake. It is actually caused by the release of the oxygen nanobubbles, which, if you remember, are released by diatoms as they consume carbon dioxide and the phosphates and nitrates from the water.
This footage is from another project where already the treatment has taken place. In the initial portion of the video, you are seeing the water near the inlet source, as in where new polluted water comes into the system. So you can see that the turbidity in the water is there, which indicates the presence of pollution, as in the clarity in the water is not that great. But as the footage will pan out, you can see how the previous treatment has been working. The water is much much more clearer. In this section of the pond, the water is completely clear. You can even see the vegetation and the surface of the pond. Isn't it so nice to see a water body fully rejuvenated and sparkling clean? These are the stills from the previous test site. You can compare the difference. This visual is from an international project location. The pond over here is infested with a harmful algal bloom. After the treatment, the beauty of the landscape has increased manifold. There is no trace of the infestation and the water quality has also become clearer. These are some other project visuals. A common cue is that the bottom of the pond also becomes visible after the treatment has taken its effect. This is a location where uh, the sugar mill effluents were released into a water body and the water quality was extremely poor. But on the bottom right, you can see how the clarity of the water has improved. These are the before and after water samples. Evidently, the treatment has worked. Even animals which used to shy away from the untreated water body now come over to drink water from this treated pond. As I had indicated, the treatment can be facilitated not only at open water bodies but also at sewage treatment plants. The following are the water quality measurements from a 3 MLD STP in a city of India. Pollutants like phosphates, oil and grease, fecal coliforms have been completely eliminated whereas the levels of BOD, COD, ammonia, total suspended solids and total phosphorus have been significantly reduced as well. The dissolved oxygen in the water has increased considerably too. pH levels are also maintained. The results from other test locations have been encouraging as well. Besides these quality parameters, another important benefit is that mosquitoes don't grow in this water because it is consumed at the larvae stage by the zooplankton. A wastewater or a sewage treatment plant is typically a large network of interconnected equipment and processes. As you would imagine, not only is setting up such a plant a considerable investment, but also operating it entails considerable costs in terms of electricity consumption and maintenance. Consider the aeration tank for example. Its primary purpose is to oxygenate the water and it typically runs for the entire day. With our solution, which generates na oxygen nanobubbles into the water, one can easily power down or shut down completely these aerators, thereby saving up on electricity and maintenance costs. So, not only is the existing treatment made more effective, but also the overall cost comes down, which is one of the important benefits of using our product in such plants. So how does our treatment method fare against the competing technologies? Remember the three characteristics of a preferred solution which I had indicated earlier? The solution should be effective, scalable and cost effective. Most other forms of treatment struggle to tick all these boxes as well as our treatment is able to do. Often as is the case, the capital costs of setting up the plant is high whereas in our treatment there is no such requirement. Besides, you do not need technical manpower to do our treatment. There is no requirement of additional land and the byproducts such as sludge and odor are completely eliminated in our process. The dissolved oxygen level in the water body also significantly increases and as you know, oxygen is the life force of a healthy marine environment. In this visual, you can see the three conventional methods of treating water pollution and the problems associated with the approach. You can choose to 
pause the video over here in case you want to read this slide in detail. What earlier were areas of concern, now are avenues of considerable appeal. By using our treatment solution, one can bring down the cost of treating polluted water. The health of the marine ecosystem also improves considerably. Industrial and agricultural productivity improves. The human health does not suffer. And there are social benefits such as tourism and rising property values surrounding the water body which can be availed as well. Some of you may have wondered that while the treatment appears to be effective at remedying pollution in open water bodies and at treatment plants, but how is it scalable or cost effective? Well, this is the highlight of our treatment summarized in a single sentence. One liter of our solution is able to effectively treat between 2 to 4 million liters of water. Yes, the treatment is well and truly scalable. Even the cost of a single liter of this product is pocket friendly. Besides these, some of the other highlights of the product are that it is completely made in India by Indian scientists. It is patented in India, in the USA and in Europe as of today. It has been certified as being non-toxic to fish and it does not contain biologicals or any toxic substances. The product also has been recognized by universities and awarded at climate change competitions. Besides treating water, this product also has a couple of other beneficial applications. Utilizing the same fundamentals of nanonutrients and the generation of oxygen by the dye atoms, a variant of this product can be applied in soils to boost crop productivity. The product can also be applied on turfs at sporting venues, especially at golf courses. It helps the grass to grow greener and shinier and the golf ball or gutty can travel extra smoothly on the surface, enhancing the sporting appeal. With this, we come to the conclusion of this presentation. The first half of this presentation was intended to be informative, whereas the second half was promotional in nature. What can certainly be said is that this product has a considerable social impact. So in case you, your dear ones, your organization or your fellow citizens are affected by water pollution, then you may feel free to reach out to me. Contact details are mentioned in the next slide.